What's up everybody, how's it going? In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the five stages that every software engineer goes through throughout their coding journey. These are five stages that every single software engineer without exception experiences. The only difference is the degree to which each individual experiences each stage. And that difference, that degree to which you experience each stage can dramatically change how you experience software engineering as a whole compared to somebody else. The point of this video is hopefully to give encouragement and comfort to those of you who are currently finding yourselves kind of stuck in one of these stages and one of the rougher of these stages and to give you comfort that we all go through them. So without further ado, let's jump into the very first stage. This is the stage of fear, of uncertainty, of doubt that we all experience before actually starting to code. This is a stage that some people experience very little. These are typically the people who start early in their life learning to code. They, they are scared at first, but then they kind of immediately get over that fear and they get into coding. But for other people like myself, this fear, this uncertainty can be quite paralyzing for a long period of time. A lot of you know that I only started to code after college and throughout college, throughout even high school, I had been exposed to coding. I had seen some of my friends who were coding. I had thought, hmm, should I learn how to code? But I was so scared of it. It was so daunting. It was like, this is a foreign language. This is not meant for me. And it took me you know, many, many years to my chagrin, I regret this, to actually take the leap and learn how to code. If you are someone who is currently in this stage, kind of wondering, is coding for me? I'm scared. I would really urge you to take the leap because stage two awaits. Stage two is the stage of excitement, of exuberance, of overconfidence with a dash of naivete. It's the stage that we all inevitably encounter once we actually start to code. We start to code for maybe a day or a week or a couple of weeks, and we quickly realize that this isn't as scary as we thought it was. This is actually kind of cool. It's actually, dare I say, easy. Right? We can code up a little script, a little algorithm, we can code up a web page, we're getting through tutorials. We feel really good. We're thinking to ourselves, why did I make coding out to be some sort of you know, super scary task when it's actually quite easy? Like, I'm the king or the queen of the world. Now, to be clear, this stage is like delusional. It's naive. You are truly, you know, looking at it through through a childish lens of like, oh, I just was able to learn the, the easy stuff very quickly. Therefore, this is very easy. But I think it's a stage that's very good to be in. And I think it's very good to be in this stage as long as possible, because I'm a fervent believer that optimism is better than pessimism. So the longer you can latch on to this excitement, to this feeling of being able to conquer the world, the better. Because unfortunately, after stage two comes stage three. And stage three, I think, is where the grand majority of software engineers spend the grand majority of their career or their journey. Stage three is the stage of imposter syndrome. It's the stage of coming back down to reality after you've experienced that exuberance, that overconfidence. It's the stage usually that occurs maybe like a few months into your learn to code journey, or perhaps once you land your first job or even your second job. And then, like I said, it can last a long time, many years, where you just feel like you're bad at coding. Like you come to the realization that, yeah, I was able to pass tutorials. I was able to you know, solve little problems that I was given you know, in classes or little homework problems, but I can't actually develop a full-fledged application from scratch. I can't do the front end, the back end, the infra. You know, I can't do all of that. I know that I experienced this when I was at my coding boot camp. I felt really confident and powerful that I had built certain applications like my pathfinding algorithm visualization tool. But then I would think to myself, wait a second, this is a tool that's you know, not really hosted on an actual website. It doesn't have a backend. It doesn't have a database. And if you ask me to do all these things, I can't do them, not without being, you know, handheld. This is the stage that you encounter when you start to apply for your first job as a software engineer and you have to go through you know, coding interviews. And you think to yourself, how in the world am I going to pass a 45 minute timed coding interview? 
Now, the good news there is that that's really just a matter of practice. And of course, I would recommend that you use my company, AlgoExpert. Go to algoexpert.io, use the promo code CLEM for a discount on the platform. But I know for a fact, having spoken to many software engineers, that coding interviews can certainly trigger this feeling of imposter syndrome, which brings you smack in the middle of stage three. I also experienced stage three very powerfully when I was at Google, my first software engineering job. And I was surrounded by all these software engineers whom I deemed to be better than me at software engineering. I remember thinking, why is it that they all seem to be more technically savvy than I am? Like I always need a help or when I do need help, they always seem to know the answer super quickly. And they seem to know these sort of obscure tidbits of knowledge that I don't know. And that of course reinforces that feeling of imposter syndrome or just that feeling that, you know, maybe coding isn't as easy as I made it out to be. So again, if you are finding yourself in this stage, please find comfort in the fact that many, many, many other people are currently in this stage and virtually everybody has been through this stage. Just go down and read the comments and I'm sure you'll find people who can echo this feeling. After stage three comes stage four. Now, stage four, I would argue, is the terminal stage for many software engineers if they don't get a sort of epiphany that will then bring them to stage five, which we'll talk about in a second. Stage four is the stage of acceptance. You've gone through you know, fear, you've overcome that fear, and you've gone through excitement, exuberance, you got brought down to reality, and now you kind of accept this reality. You accept this reality, you accept the fact that you are not the best software engineer in the world, there is tons to know about software engineering, and you're not gonna know it all, and you tell yourself, I'm gonna stay in my lane, I'm gonna focus on what I'm good at, I'm gonna leverage the skills that I really do feel confident in to hopefully bolster the other ones. So for example, for me, I remember thinking, Listen, I don't know much about the back end or about infrastructure, but I know a good amount about the front end. So I'm going to stick to my lane in the front end and really double down on that. And then I have other skills that I can leverage, like my good communication skills, my marketing, sort of ingenuity, my business acumen, my interpersonal skills. I'm going to leverage these qualities that I have to sort of counteract my perhaps lacking technical skills, to counteract or try to eliminate that imposter syndrome from stage three. And that is exactly what I did. At Google, I focused on these sort of other skills. That's how I got promoted quite quickly by going more down the path of managing interns or helping helping teams communicate with one another. And then of course I, I founded my company, Algo Expert, where I was able to leverage those skills and, and do very well. So that's stage four. It's really just, I accept that this is, you know, what software engineering is. It's not easy, it's difficult, but I'm gonna make the best of it. And then we get to stage five. This is the stage that I think I am in. This is the stage that I think most people do eventually get in if they get this sort of epiphany that I'm about to share, because stage five is a very similar to stage four with a small nuance or small difference. That difference being at stage five, while you accept that software engineering is difficult and that you may not know everything and that you're gonna leverage your skills, you also realize that Every new piece of software engineering knowledge, every new challenge, everything that you do not know is actually something that can be learned quite easily. It is not something that you should avoid, like in stage four where you say, I'm gonna double down on my strengths and only focus on my strengths. It's something that if you think it would be useful for you to you know, tackle this challenge or this new thing, you can do it. You just have to spend a little bit of time reading documentation or spend a little bit of time fiddling around with the technology. Does it mean you're gonna be an expert at it? No. Does it mean you're gonna be as good at it as you are at other things in software engineering? Also no. But does it mean you can write a decent piece of software with it? You bet. Just to give you an example with me, for the first like, five years of my software engineering career, I was terrified of the backend and infrastructure components of software engineering, especially infrastructure, things like Docker, Kubernetes, containers, you know, the cloud. And so I always either avoided that altogether. For example, at Google, I, I always kind of looked the other way when that was kind of you know brought in front of my eyes. Or at a place like my company, Algo Expert, I just delegated that to my co-founder, Antoine, who was in charge of it. Whenever there was a little issue related to that, I would be like, okay, he'll he's going to deal with it. That's his domain of expertise. And it, you know, that's not for me. But lately I've been diving more into that. And I got to say, I've been able to dive into that because I have this sort of newfound confidence that, Hey, this is just a new tech that I need to read documentation about, learn a little bit about, 
practice with, and I'll be fine. You know, it's kind of like comparable to a new sport. I've never played, let's say, you know, cricket or American football. Been a very long time since I've played that, since, you know, maybe like middle school or high school, a tiny bit in gym class. So I don't really know the rules of these sports. I don't really know how they work. But am I confident that someone could teach me these sports and over time I can be good enough to play them, you know, recreationally? Of course, like I'm confident enough in my sort of physical ability and mental ability to be able to pick up these things because it's not rocket science, you know? And this is what happens in stage five with programming. Any new tech, any new programming language, any new issue, any obscure bug, you know, your terminal goes like crazy and you have no idea what this error means. Instead of getting panicky or instead of saying, okay, this is not in my lane, I'm gonna go find someone who can help me, you start to tell yourself, you know what? Like, I can solve this. It might take a little bit of time, but I know I can solve this. It's just yet another new thing to conquer. That's stage five. I'm right now in stage five. To be honest, I don't think there's a stage six, but I'd be very curious to hear from people who inevitably have way more experience in software engineering than I do to let us know in the comments below, like, is there a stage six? Do you agree with these stages? Do you disagree with them? Do you find yourself in stage five? How long did you spend in each stage? And on that note, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, share the video with anyone you think might benefit from it. Don't forget to follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter if you enjoy short form content, Instagram if you like pictures, and I will see you in the next video. Video.